Good morning, I'm Judge Amy Carter. This is courtroom one, session one. Could I have the attorneys place their appearances on the record, please? Kathy Kennedy Swanson on behalf of the Office of the State Attorney. Good morning, Alexis Augusto on behalf of the Office of the Public Defender. Thank you. Sir, good morning, your name? Joseph Carter. Mr. Carter, this is case number 19 CF 5347. You were arrested for possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, aggravated assault with a firearm, and possession of ecstasy. I do find probable cause for the offenses, and I will appoint the public defender's office to represent you, sir. Gonna set your bond at $2,500 on count one. $2,500 on count two and $150 on count three. Thank you, sir. Mr. Foy? Yes, ma'am. Good morning, sir. This is case number 19 CF 5256. You were arrested for fleeing and attempting to elude, sir. Just give me one moment. Mr. Foy, I do find probable cause for that offense. Your bond will be set at $7,500 in that matter. You also have case number 18 CF 13249, sir. You failed to register. You were arrested pursuant to a warrant where probable cause was previously found, and your bond in that matter will be $2,500, and I'll appoint the public defender to represent you in both cases, sir. Thank you, Judge. Yes. Thank you. Sir, good morning. Your name? Richard Jones, middle of Franklin. I'm here pursuant to a case where I was panhandling in the middle of the road. All right, sir. Just give me one minute. You, this is case number 19MM3199. You were arrested for possession of cannabis, less than 20 grams, possession of drug paraphernalia. I do find probable cause. Is there an offer for Mr. Jones this morning? State going to make an offer. We had no objection to ROR. Okay, I'll take it. I'll take it. Okay, when's my court date? Okay, that'll work. Does Mr. Jones want to resolve this case this morning? Actually, yes, Your Honor, he would like to, if possible. All right, well, you can always plead to the court. Uh, yes, Your Honor, we would like to plead to the court. For okay, how many days does Mr. Jones have? I've been in for uh, probably about three days, Your Honor. Two and a half, three, three. days. Three. Okay, just need the plea form. What did I sign to? I 
I don't know if I did say it, but the public defender's office is appointed. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Jones, take that out of your mouth. Thank you. Mr. Jones, did you read the plea form before you signed yes, it? Yes, I did read the plea form. Okay. Do you have any questions about any of the rights on the form? No, I don't. Okay. Are you on probation, sir? No, I am not. Do you understand if you're not a United States citizen that this plea will subject you to deportation? Yes, I understand that I am a U.S. citizen, though, however, so that is okay. more to the Then you point. won't have a problem. Have you taken any drugs, alcohol, or medication that would affect your ability to understand what's happening in court I today? I took uh, Vistarel, which is an anti-anxiety medication, and Risperdal, which is a schizophrenia medication this morning. Okay. So that would clear up my perspective. Got it. Okay. Sir, I'm going to accept your plea. I'm going to withhold adjudication on count one, sentence you to three days in the Orange County Jail with credit for three days' time served. On count two, I'm going to adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to three days in the Orange County Jail with credit for three days' time served. Thank you. You have to pay court costs, sir. Those need to be paid by April 17th. Uh, there is a problem. Well, let me finish talking first, okay? You have to pay those by April 17th of 2020, and you have 30 days to appeal the judgment and sentence of the court. Okay, what did you want to say, thank sir? Thank you. Okay. So I'm going home tomorrow? Today. Today. All right. Great. Good morning, sir. Your name? Lysander Weaver. Mr. Weaver, this is case number 19MM3209. You were arrested for petty theft. I do find probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Was there um, an offer for Mr. Weaver? No, Your Honor. Do you have an objection to him resolving this case today? Um, yes, Your Honor. State okay. objective to resolving the theft at this point. I see on his um, criminal history he has at least one prior theft. Um, we would like to run a more detailed criminal history to see if there are any more. On Mr. Weaver, I just see a, a shoplifting. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. All right, Mr. Weaver, your bond is $250. Thank you, sir. You got us for no return on Mr. Weaver, Your Honor. That is to what's going on. the Publix, 2873 South Orange Avenue. Mr. Weaver, you understand you can't go back to the Publix on South Orange Avenue where this incident took place. You can't go back there, okay? Thank you, sir. Get ahead of myself. Good morning, your name? Yes, Tyrell Oliver. Mr. Oliver? Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Sir, this is case number 19 CF 5156. You were arrested for aggravated assault on a law enforcement officer. Just give me a moment, sir.
All right, sir, I do find probable cause. I'm going to appoint the public defender's office to represent you, and your bond is $5,000. Uh, your Honor, would Your Honor consider uh, lowering the bond to $3,000, $4,000? Uh, my client has said he has no income to pay the, that amount, and his family would end up bailing him out today. What did his family tell him that they can pay? Uh, 3000 State, did you want to be heard? We'll leave in the court's discretion, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Oliver, I'll set your bond at $3,000. Sir, good morning. Your name? Oh, uh, Menace Robinson. Mr. Robinson, this yeah, is uh, case number 18, CF 17169, sir. You failed to appear for pretrial on April 10th. At this time, your bond on count one is $7,500, and your bond on count two is $500, sir. Ma'am. Yes. I want to find this attorney. She told me she was me on my boss and boss me on me say he was made a 10th. I walked from the store yesterday. I just got, I've been in the hospital. I, I, they, they got all my records down there, but all the records that I've been in at the hospital, at a scope. Who's your lawyer, sir? Uh, Lisa Leslie, uh, some Leslie. Uh, she, I got it on voice, man. I got it, I got all the proof that you need. Okay. That well, I've sir, in the hospital, you I got the proof that this Leslie. She told me on the bail boss, me, I got the board member, my boss, he like her, she like her somewhere, my boss, I work for. I have a moment here and I'll see who is filed said, 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 said that. Leslie Coulter from the public defender's office, it looks like, represents yeah, Mr. She, Robinson. Okay. She told me that it was on May the 10th. That was, and then, you know, I was. I'm having a piece of the pre-trial. Trying to get April my reels. Out. My reels are broken. He has what? The pre-trial was on April the 10th, not right. May the 10th. Right. So I'm saying he may have been confused mm -hmm. on the date. It's on voicemail. I'm in the hospital all week, all month. Let me just look at something, Mr. Robinson, okay? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I got all the proof downstairs that I know that Bobby being in the Second hospital. offer, uh, Department of Correction officer offer was conveyed on in March to the uh, defendant's attorney. Okay. I just want to see if he was in court. <coughs> like a case management conference where he would have been in court.
All right, Mr. Robinson, I'm going to modify the KPS. I'm going to release you ROR, sir. Well, thank you, Bill. Mr. Thompson, or or Mr. Robinson, yes, ma'am. You need to get into contact with your attorney yeah, right I sure, away. I, I sure will, ma'am. Okay. Yes, yeah, sir. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome, sir. Good morning. Your name? Are you Mr. Falks? You all right, Mr. Falks? My chest. I got bullet fragments in my chest. My neck. And it just hurt me real bad because I haven't took my medication. Okay. I left my medication at Greyhound in my bag. Okay. And I've just been hurting ever since. I was on my way going to court. Okay. I'm um, in Upper Trouble County. And you are Mr. Falks? Yes, Is that correct? Okay, sir. And I had court today, this morning. Okay. Well, you're here in case number 19MM3233. You were arrested for petty theft. I find probable cause. I will appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Is there an offer for Mr. Falks? There is not, Your Honor. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, Mr. Falks, your bond is $250, and I'll appoint the public defender's office to represent you, sir. We'd also ask for no return to Shell Gas Station. The Shell Gas Station. Yes, sir. Do you understand you can't return uh, to the Shell Gas Station um, at 601 North John Young Parkway? Okay? I only have 60 bucks. Sir. Yeah. Well, get in contact with your lawyer and they'll let whoever needs to know where you are, okay? So my bond still is $250. It's $250, sir. Thank you. Oh. Good morning, sir. Your name? Robert Sear. Mr. Sherry, you're here for an out of county warrant, for Seminole County, sir, for a violation of probation. You failed to appear for the arraignment. Your bond is set at $2,000. If you're unable to post that bond, sir, Seminole County will pick you up and you'll see a judge when you get there. I'm, un I'm unable to, to come up with the $2,000. Excuse me? I said I can't come up with the money right now. Okay, well then Seminole County will come pick you up and you'll see a judge when you get there and you'll be able to discuss um, your bond at that time. Okay. Okay? Thank, Thank you. Thank you, sir. Are these still like on move up? Who is it? Charles Christopher with mental health. Okay. What about Mr. Kajagas that Mr. Klein's here for? Oh, he's coming up? Okay. Uh, good morning, you Mr. Burroughs? Oh, okay. And I feel like this was the one I didn't have an affidavit for. Okay, so we're not going to see him? Okay, so we don't need to reset Mr. Burroughs? Okay. We're not resetting Mr. Burroughs? No, apparently, I didn't have an affidavit for him, and okay. he's here for a parole okay. issue, so we're not resetting Mr. Burroughs. Yeah, yeah. Is Mr. Okay, and this one, good. Are you are you Mr. Caban? Yes, ma'am. Sir, okay. So, on this case, he was arrested on a warrant, which is case number 19 CF 4937. If you look at the affidavit, a case number was assigned to it, but there's no offense. So I'm not sure. And get that case number again, Your Honor. Nine, the case number that is on the new affidavit where the warrant was served or executed is 19 CF 5422. So 
if you read the affidavit, it just basically says, I came into contact with Mr. Caban. He had a warrant under the 19 CF 4937 case, and I executed the warrant and took him to jail. So I think it's really supposed to be case number 19 CF 4937. him on the 19 CF 5422 and then set conditions of release on the 19 CF and do bond on that case three seven so then I guess and what I'm trying to figure out though is this will the 19 CF 5422 case just get I assume the state attorney's office will have to no info if it's a duplicate duplicate case in the future Can we, right, but can we print, well, I have the arrest affidavit for 19 CF 4937 that I pulled from that case. Can't we just, huh? The arrest affidavit I do have, that's this. That's what he was arrested for yesterday, how he, how he was actually brought into custody. Miss Jackie, was that warrant of the 19 CF 4937 served on him, or is that, that warrant is still outstanding? That's the question. Well, it doesn't make any sense then. I understand, but if it's not served on him, if, if right. let's say you release him, yeah, or, or on this case, and he walks down the street, they're going to serve that 19 CF 4937 on him and bring him right back. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I so do. So if he's not been served with that warrant, yeah. Okay, I'm just very confused because I don't understand how he could be then arrested for that warrant, taken to jail, and then not given the be given the warrant for what he was arrested for. That would be the sheriff's office. I okay. can't okay. answer that question. So can we get him served with the warrant? How do I do that? The same thing. So hold on. Let me pull up the let me pull up the other case, the four nine three. It's the same. Failure to report and register a vehicle is what's on the arrest affidavit or on the affidavit to issue the warrant. And then it's the same exact, it's just it's reciting what was in the warrant. I don't want to ROR him and then have him be released and then he's just right back where we started. It doesn't make any sense. So does Jill need to call someone and ask about the warrant or or was that the public? I'm not sure what to do about that. Okay. And then we could bring him back this afternoon? Okay. Well, Mr. Come on, here's here's the problem. I, I want to make sure you understand what the issue is, okay? So you have an outstanding warrant for failing to register. The warrant has not been served on you, so it's still active, okay? Just let me finish. Do you have a copy of it? Let me see what you have. Okay. Okay, yeah, he didn't give me nothing. All right, so that's what I'm trying to explain to you. So you were arrested for an outstanding warrant and no other offense. Correct. Right? Correct. So they didn't serve the actual warrant on you for which you've been arrested, so it's still active. So if I were to release you today, when you're out and about, yeah. they run your name, they're going to see that you have an active warrant, you're going to be right back here. Um, yes, I wanted to get back so to work. you can... Would the court consider ROWing him and then whenever they're able to?
to serve. You can't RR him until the warrant is served on The warrant is served. Yes, it has to be served. Well, I can ROR him on the this yes. case, but what I'm trying to explain to him is he's just going to get rearrested. Right, right. Because the moment they get ready to release him, they're going to run his information again and serve that warrant on him before they ever release him. Right. So he'll be back at IA's tomorrow. Well, then that's what I'm going to do. For? Uh, either, because okay. even if we ask him to serve it, he's still going to be reset for tomorrow anyway. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's the same. Okay, so this is what I want to explain to you, Mr. Caban. I'm going to ROR you on case number 19 CF 5422, but because that warrant has not been served on you, sir, it sounds like they're going to serve it on you as they're processing you out, and I'll see you tomorrow and we'll set your bond on that warrant. I'm sorry, sir. There's no way that we can get him seen, have him served today and have him seen today and he can get a bond. Are you going to be posting a bond, sir? Yeah, I'm trying to get back to work. I don't want to lose my job, and I've got my parents I take care of. I mean, he's entitled to a bond, and he was arrested. I, I think he needs to be seen today. Like, that doesn't make sense to me, that he would be arrested on a warrant, not be served with a warrant, and then being held here when he's entitled to a bond. But that would be the sheriff. I would have no way. I mean, I yeah. can. All right. Well, I'm, when we take a break, I'm going to have my JA, I guess, or who, I don't know who reaches out to corrections or to the sheriff's department. If we have whoever the sergeant or whoever's the patrolling officer mm -hmm. downstairs. Okay. They'll serve it on him today, and then we can see him this afternoon. Okay, I'll, Mr. Caban, I'm going to set your case, reset your case for this afternoon, okay? Thank you. All right. Okay. Sir, good morning. Your name? Mr. Kahigas, you are here in case number 19 CF 2843, sir. You were arrested pursuant to a warrant where probable cause was previously found for failing to register or providing false information by act or omission. You're represented here by Mr. Klein. Good morning again, Your Honor. John Klein on his behalf. Um, I would just point out to the court that Mr. Kajigas, Kajigas, who I've known for years now, I represent him regarding a clep, a clep, a clep, clemency request regarding the underlying ca case that okay. led to this case. I've known him for years. Uh, he's a longtime resident of Orange County. He has resided within the county since. 2001 he has a home here he's married he has kids uh, he has never failed to appear as required in court and we would ask the court to set a reasonable bond in the amount of twenty five hundred dollars regarding this charge okay state did you wish to be heard no objection Your Honor. okay uh, I'll set the bond at $2,500, sir. And thank the court. You're welcome. Thank you. Have a nice day, Your Honor. You too. Good morning. Your name? William Castro. Mr. Castro, this is case number 18 CF 13697. Sir, you failed to appear for arraignment on November 8th of 2018. Your bond on count one is $5,000 and your bond on count two is $500. And I will appoint the public defender's office to represent you, sir. Thank you. Good morning, are you Mr. Ellis? Well. Mr. Ellis, this is case number 18 CF 8765. You failed to appear for pretrial conference on January 9th of this year. Your bond is $5,000, sir. 
You also have case number 19 CF 5377. You were arrested for possession of a firearm by a convicted felon and possession of ecstasy. And I do find probable cause for both of those offenses. Sir, your affidavit of insolvency states that you make $850 every week. Is that correct? Yes. Is that yes? Yes. And you have one dependent? Okay, so you don't qualify for the public defender's office, so you're going to need to hire a lawyer to help you with these charges, okay? Pardon me? Why would I have to hire a lawyer? Because you don't qualify based on your that's income for the public put, defender. That's what she put down on there. She just asked me to make up a number. I don't have no job. Well. Okay, Mr. Ellis, I just asked you, though, if that was true, and you said yes. No, I said no. I said, do you make $850 no, every no. week, and you said yes no, to me. No, that's what the lady told me to put down there. Down, downstairs, she said, just make up a number. I don't have no job. Okay. Period. Do you, okay. Do you have any source of income? None. Okay. Sir, I will appoint the public defender's office to represent you based on your testimony today. And your bond on count one's $4,000, your bond on count two is $150. Thank you, sir. Mr. Keter have two cases, Your Honor? Pardon me? Mr. Keter, um, Mr. Ellis have two cases? Two cases. Okay. The KPS and okay. then the other case. I did both. Okay. Sir, good morning. Your name? Montrevious Floyd. What about Mr. Um, Figueroa Adermas? Oh, uh, well, okay. Looks like they have some vegetables. I'll take it for it. I'm sorry, sir. Tell me your name again. Montrevious Floyd. Mr. Floyd. You are here in case number 19 CF 5010. You were arrested pursuant to a warrant where probable cause was previously found for armed burglary of a conveyance and grand theft third degree. I will appoint the public defender's office to represent you, sir. Your bond on count one is $3,500 and your bond on count two is $150. Thank you, sir. Good morning, your name? Your name, sir? Justin Goff. Mr. Goff, this is case number 19 CF 5405. You were arrested for grand theft third degree and resisting officer without violence. I find probable cause for the offenses, sir, and I will appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Your bond on count one will be $1,500 and your bond on count two is $100. Thank you, sir. We ask for no contact um, with the victim, Your Honor. Sir, you're not to have any contact with a uh, Ashley Treviso. Do you understand? No contact with the alleged victim, Ashley Treviso. You can have any contact with her. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Good morning, your name, sir? Uh, Richard Hall. Mr. Hall, this is case number 19 CF 4134. You were arrested pursuant to a warrant or probable cause was previously found for burglary of a conveyance, obtaining goods with a credit card of another, grand theft third degree, possession of stolen or counterfeit credit card, and fraudulent use of credit cards. Mr. Hall, 
your application for the public defender says you make $650 per week. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Where do you work? Uh, I, fl I flip motorcycles, ma'am. You what? I build motorcycles, ma'am. Okay. And you don't have any dependents? No, ma'am. Okay. And that $650 is after taxes? Uh, pretty much, yes, ma'am. Okay. So you're going to need to hire an attorney to assist you with these cases. You don't qualify for the public defender's office. After taxes or before taxes, you say? After taxes. Oh, What's no, your take-home pay? Well, take-home, I don't know, about four and some change after taxes, man. Okay. Does he qualify? Okay. All right, Mr. Hall, you do qualify for the public defender based upon that testimony, and I will appoint them to represent you, sir. There's too much going on here. Sir, on count one in 19 CF 4134, um, your bond on count one is going to be uh, $3,500. Count two, 150. Count three, four, and five will also be 150. Be, uh, and then you have, that's 4134. You also have 19 CF 5030 where you arrested pursuant to a warrant where probable cause was previously found for burglary of an occupied structure and grand theft third degree. You, your bond on count one is going to be $3,500. Count two, I'll set at And then I looked at all of the out on bond cases. I'm not going to take any action on any of those cases because all of the offense dates are prior to the first arrest date. Thank you very much, John. Thank, Thank you, sir. Good morning, ma'am. Your name? Morning. Uh, Dawn Moggett. Miss Moggett, you are here in case number 19 CF 4135, ma'am. You were arrested for burglary of a conveyance, obtaining goods with a credit card of another, grand theft third degree, possession of stolen or counterfeit credit card, and fraudulent use of a credit card. You're not to have any contact with Richard Hall, do you understand, ma'am? Yes. Okay. Or any of the alleged victims in this case. Your bond on count one will be $3,500. Count two, 150, three, four, and five will also be 150. I just need to look at something really quickly. Offense date for 19 CF 3991. The affidavit to issue the warrant is not an odyssey. Is that 3911 you said? 3991. Oh, 3991. <coughs> I don't see it in our system as okay. of right well, now. Well, the offense date for this 4135 is February 15th, and she was arrested on 320 on the out on bond. So I'm not going to take any action on 19 CF 3991. Okay. Good morning, sir. Your name? Frank Matat. Morning. Mr. Matat, you are here in case number 19 CF 5029. You were arrested pursuant to a warrant where probable cause was previously found 
for burglary of a conveyance, grand theft by contractor, grand theft third degree of a motor vehicle, and criminal mischief. I will appoint the public defender's office to represent you, sir. Gonna set your bond at $2,500 on count one, and counts two, three, and four will be set at $150, sir. Thank you. Where's the total of? Pardon me? The total of? You have it? Good morning, your name? Ernesto Medina. Mr. Medina, this is case number 19 CF 5401. You are arrested for grand theft of a motor vehicle. I do find probable cause. I'm going to appoint the public defender's office to represent you, sir, and I'm going to place you on pre-trial release. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir, good morning. Your name? Mateyer. Mr. Mateyer, this is case number 19 CF 5406. Yeah. You are arrested for grand theft, third degree. I do find probable cause, sir. I'm going to appoint the public defender's office to represent you. And your bond is $1,000, sir. We ask for no return, Your Honor, to the 707 Palmer Street. Um, I think I have 33 East Robinson, the Craft and Common Coffee Shop. I'm sorry, Your Honor, that was the victim. I'm sorry. So no, no contact with the victim. Okay. No return to the. I apologize. Your oh, Honor. that's okay. Um, Mr. Mater, you understand you can't go back to the Craft and Common Coffee Shop. Yeah. Okay, and you can't have any contact with the alleged victim in this case. No problem. Good morning, your name? Good morning, my name is Justin Moore. Mr. Moore, you are here in case number 19 CF 3873. You were arrested for home invasion robbery with a firearm pursuant to a warrant where probable cause was previously found, sir. I will appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Stated you want to be heard with respect to bond on count one. Yes, Your Honor. State request the defendant be held at no bond based on proof, evident presumption. Great. Looking at the affidavit by Officer Dennis Porter, looks like on um, March 15th of this year, the, this defendant with a co defendant, um, while the, the victim was trying to come into his front door, pull, they pulled up in tightly um, hoods, hoodies around their face. They put a black handgun to the victim's head. They forced the, the victim inside of his home where this defendant and the co-defendant were able to get more than $10,000 in cash, an iPad, charger, clothing, and other items. Um, the victim recognized this defendant based on knowing him or going to school with him in middle school and knowing him for approximately nine years. Um, he was able to identify this um, defendant as one of the two um, suspects from that home invasion robbery. Um, sorry, yes, Your Honor, we would ask the defendant be held at no bond, no contact with the co-defendant. Um, no contact with the victim, um, no weapons and no firearms, Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Augusto, did you want to be heard? Yes, Your Honor. <clears throat> we would argue that there is um, a lack of evidence to show proof, evident, presumption, great as to this, um, the identification of Mr. Moore being the uh, suspect in this case. Um, we know that it says that the victim stated he knew him, knew uh, Mr. Moore, um, but it didn't, doesn't show that um, he was able to get a good, clear look at his face uh, during the robbery. Um, said they were wearing hoods and they had, um, they had their faces covered. Um, so we would argue that proof is not evident, presumption is not great. That's the only evidence that there is for this case. Um, there was no photo lineup done or anything. Well, there was a photo lineup done, but um, that would be the only uh, testimony that they are relying on in this case, and we don't believe that that amounts to proof, evident, presumption, great. Uh, in the alternative, um, we ask that the court use its discretion to set a monetary bond in this case. My client does have family that lives here. He is employed in Florida, and he lives in Florida, so he is not a flight risk in this scenario. So we would ask that the court use its discretion in the alternative. Okay. 
rebuttal state would just say that it was the the length of time that the defendant I mean, the victim has known the defendant so it's seeing I guess the portion of his face that was uncovered as well as recognizing his voice in the affidavit right okay I do find that there is proof evident or presumption great um, the victim stated that he'd known the defendant for nine years that they'd met in middle school that he also recognized his voice um, so I do think that there is significant identification of the defendant um, I'm not going to exercise my discretion to set a bond at this time he last failed to appear in April of this year um, he's on state probation and um, taking those things into consideration I'm not going to set a bond at this time sure. thank you Oh, and let me just add, though, you're not to possess any weapons or any firearms, sir, while you're out on bond. You're not to have any contact um, with Tameric Dennis, and you may not return to 4001 Versailles Drive. Do you understand, sir? Mm -hmm. yes, any? Okay. Thank you, sir. Good morning, your name, sir? Jose Nazario. Mr. Nazario, this is case number 19 CF 5386. You were arrested for possession of heroin, sir. I do find probable cause. I'm going to appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Your bond will be $1,000. I do find that there is probable cause for the on view violation of probation. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you in that matter, sir, and I'm going to set your bond at $3,500. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, your name? Wyatt Oakleaf. Mr. Oakleaf, you were arrested for, in case number 19 CF 5376, you were arrested for possession of heroin and possession of drug paraphernalia. There is probable cause. I will appoint the public defender. Your bond on count one is $500 and your bond on count two is $100. Your Honor, uh, may we be heard on this case? Oh, sure. I'm sorry. I didn't see your statement no, here, right. Mr. Augusto. Um, oh, yes. I'm sorry. I didn't flip and it's not checked on my, and I actually wrote no probable cause. Okay. State. I, we spoke about it earlier. Okay. I sent an email. I sent an email to the officer. State would ask for their 24 hours, but I had, we spoke about it when I first got to court. And so the officer has already been emailed. Okay. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, we would object to uh, the just the extension of the 24 hours simply because um, the state would have to show extraordinary circumstance to do so. Well, I think under the rule, the extraordinary circumstance part comes in after the 48 hours occurs. So they are entitled to the 24. Um, mm -hmm. I'll keep the bond at 500 and 100. Okay. Um, I know that we've had this in the past. I know that Ms. Bush stated that sometimes the affidavit doesn't load. I, I don't know. I again, I sent the officer an email just stating, okay. and we also sent um, OCSO uh, records department as well for any of their supplemental reports they may have. Okay. If I get it, obviously by this afternoon, I'll let the court know right. this afternoon. I just don't right. have it as of this okay. moment. Okay, Mr. Oakley, you you do have a bond. If the state's not able to produce that information by tomorrow, um, I'll release you ROR, but you can certainly bond out. Okay. Thank you, sir. Sir, good morning. Your name? John Henry Roberts, Jr. All right. What about Mr. Ramos Gonzalez? Oh. And you're Mr. Roberts? Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Sir, this is case number 19 CF 5390. You were arrested pursuant to a warrant where probable cause was previously found for petty theft with two prior convictions. Your bond is $500 in that matter, sir. Ma'am? Is Just this... Just let me get through all the cases, sir, and if you have a question, I'll be able to maybe answer that when you're done, okay? Sir, you cannot return to the Dollar General, okay? At 1001 South Orange Blossom Trail. Then you have case number 
19 CF 5391, you were arrested for petty theft with two prior convictions. Your bond is $500 in that matter, sir. And again, these all of these cases stem out of the Dollar General, so you can't go back there. Um, and then 19 CF 5392, another petty theft with two prior convictions, sir. Your bond is $500. I think that's all. And the public defender is appointed on every case. Give a question, Mr. Roberts. You said Dollar General? The Dollar General. Thank you, sir. Good morning, are you Mr. Roman? Yes. Sir, this is case number 19 CF 5044. You were arrested pursuant to a warrant where probable cause was previously found for the offenses of RICO, conspiracy to traffic in cocaine greater than 28 grams, conspiracy to traffic in cocaine greater than 28 grams, and unlawful use of a two-way communication device, sir. Are you hiring an attorney, sir, or do you need to yes. see if you qualify for the public defender? No, I have an attorney. You do? Who's your lawyer? Robert Mike. Robert Mike? Yeah, he's okay. supposed to be here. He was supposed to be here? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I understand there was a co-defendant that was in here last week on this case, sir. Um, and I think that you need to get in touch with your attorney and have him set a bond hearing for you, okay? Right. Um, so at this time, I'm gonna stay all the bonds as they are, and I'm not gonna take any action on the out on bond case, the 19 CF 2775, that can be addressed at the bond hearing. Okay? okay? All right, thank you, sir. Sir, good morning. Your name? Telia Solomon. Mr. Solomon, this is case number 19 CF 5014. You were arrested pursuant to a warrant where probable cause was previously found for the offenses of RICO, conspiracy to traffic in heroin greater than 28 grams, two counts, and unlawful use of a two-way communication device. I will appoint the Public Defender's Office to represent you, sir. Um, Mr. Augusto, I will let you know, as I said, this is a co-defendant. Mr. Solomon, I will say that you're not to have any contact with any of your co-defendants in this case. This case was in here last week. It had like the 600 pages worth of discovery right. or the probable cause to issue the warrant. Um, so I think that the bond hearing for Mr. Solomon would be best served once your office has had an opportunity to review that okay. and have it set downtown. I'm gonna do the same thing I did on the last case. I'm gonna stay all the bonds at this time to each count. I'm not gonna take any action on the out on bond case because I'm not sure how it fits and have it addressed at the bond hearing. Thank you, Mr. Solomon. Sir, good morning. Your name? Timothy David Wade. Is Mr. Suarez Torres Spanish? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And you're Mr. Wade? Yes, ma'am. Sir, good morning. You were arrested in case number 18 CF 9705 for burglary of an occupied structure and grand theft third degree. 
This was pursuant to a warrant where probable cause was previously found. Um, I will appoint the public defender to represent you, sir. You're not to have any contact with the victim and you're not to return to the scene. Your bond on count one is $5,000 and your bond on count two is $500. Thank you, sir. Good morning, are you Mr. Wilkins? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Wilkins, this is case number 19 CF 5424. You were arrested for grand theft of a motor vehicle and possession of cannabis less than 20 grams. I do find probable cause. I will appoint the public defender's office to represent you, sir. And count one, I'm going to set your bond at $2,500 and count two will be $100. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. This is case number 19-MO-696. Are you Mr. Fernandez? Yes, ma'am. Sebastian Lewis Martin Fernandez. Okay. Sir, you're arrested for disorderly conduct. I do find probable cause. I will appoint the public defender. Your bond is $250. I see that he's on state probation. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, you would like to ask the court if ROR is a possibility today. I'm currently in Veterans Court, and um, I have a follow-up appointment over with substance abuse over at the VA hospital, Lake Baldwin, on Friday with Mr. Paul Rowan. All right, Mr. Fernandez, make sure you make it to your appointment on Friday, okay? I'll release you ROR. Yes, I really appreciate your help, ma'am. Thank you. Um, Judge Whitehead can also validate a lot of stuff I mentioned. Okay. Thank you, sir. State had no objection, Your Honor. Thank you. <laughs> sir, good morning. Your name? Say your name, sir. Travis Hawkins. Mr. Hawkins, this is case number 19MO697. You were arrested for disorderly conduct. I do find probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender. Is there an offer for Mr. Hawkins? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, either no objection to ROR or three days. Education, three days. We'll accept that offer, Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Hawkins, did you read the plea form before you signed it? Ma'am. Did you read the plea form before you signed it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Do you have any questions about any of the rights you're giving up on the form? No, ma'am. So are you on probation? No, ma'am. Do you understand if you're not a United States citizen that this plea will subject you to deportation? Yes, ma'am. Have you taken any drugs, alcohol, or medication that would affect your ability to understand what's happening in court this morning? Uh, no, ma'am. Okay. Um, I'll accept your plea, adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to three days in the Orange County Jail with credit for two days time served. You need to pay court costs. Those need to be paid by April 17th of 2020, and you have 30 days to appeal the judgment and sentence of the court in writing, sir. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Thank you, ma'am.
Good morning, are you Mr. Johnson? Yes, ma'am. Sir, this is case number 19M0698. You were arrested for disorderly conduct. I do find probable cause, and I will appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Is there an offer for Mr. Johnson? No objection to ROR or three days. We will accept that offer, Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Johnson, did you read the plea form before you signed it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Do you have any questions about any of the rights you're giving up on the form? No, ma'am. Okay. Are you on probation, sir? No, ma'am. Do you understand if you're not a United States citizen that this plea will subject you to deportation? Yes, ma'am. Have you taken any drugs, alcohol, or medication that would affect your ability to understand what's happening in court this morning? No, ma'am. Okay. Sir, I'm going to accept your plea, adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to three days in the Orange County Jail with credit for three days' time served. You do need to pay court costs. Those need to be paid by April 17th of 2020, and you have 30 days to appeal the judgment and sentence of the court in writing. Okay. Yes, Thank you, sir. Oh, yes. He has two cases? Yeah, one moment. We're going to go off the record. Three days, two days. Thank you. Oh, and here's Mr. Johnson. And here's Mr. Johnson. Okay. Sir, good morning. Your name? Richard Scarborough. Mr. Scarborough, you are here in case number 19MO699. You were arrested for disorderly conduct. I do find probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. Is there an offer for Mr. Scarborough? Yes, sir. Adjudication of guilt, three days. Okay. Yes, you want to accept that, sir? I'll accept that, Okay. Any contemplation of the plea to say those remain silent as the out on bond case. Okay. Mr. Scarborough, did you read the plea form before you signed it? Yes, ma'am. Do you have any questions about any of the rights you're giving up? No, ma'am. Are you on probation? No, ma'am. Do you understand if you're not a United States citizen that this plea will subject you to deportation? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Have you taken any drugs, alcohol, or medication that would affect your ability to understand what's happening in court this morning? No, ma'am. Sir, I'll accept your plea, adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to three days in the Orange County Jail with credit for two days' time served. You need to pay court costs. Those need to be paid by April 17th of 2020. You have 30 days to appeal the judgment and sentence of the court in writing. And then 19 CF 3090, I will take no action on that matter. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good morning, sir. Your name? My name is Raul Davila. Mr. Davila, you are here in case number MM3234. Sir, you were arrested for battery. I do find probable cause. 
I will appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Sir, you're not allowed to return to 4305 South Summeron Boulevard. That's the Avalon Condos. And you can't have any contact with Araya Cologne. I'm going to set your bouncer at $1,000. And then case number 19, CF 1448, I will take no action. We don't ask for no weapons, Your Honor. Yes. Mr. Um, Davila, you cannot possess any weapons or any firearms while you're out on bond. Do you understand, sir? No, ma'am. Pardon me? No, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we'll reset Mr. Harris. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Jones, you are here in case number Nineteen MM three two two seven. You are arrested for petty theft. I do find probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender. So you can't return to the Walmart at twenty five hundred South Kirkman Road. Do you understand? Okay. Your bond in that case is two hundred fifty dollars. Do you know what his bond amount is? What's the matter? Oh, no. You, you're not done yet. Oh, I'm sorry. He has an out on bond case. Oh. He was ROR'd. He was ROR'd? Okay, I'll take no action on 19MM2142. Thank you, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. How about Miss Nelson? She refused. Okay. All right. We'll reset Miss Nelson. Good morning, sir. Are you Mr. Pugh? Yes, Your Honor. Sir, this is case number 19 MM3230. You were arrested for petty theft. I do find probable cause. Sir, were you going to hire an attorney to assist you, or do you, oh, I'll appoint the public defender, sir, based upon your affidavit here. Yeah, I'm not sure at this point, Your Honor. So 
So if I have to, I'll just take a public defender, fire them, and then do what I got to do. I don't really know at this point. Okay. Well, based upon the affidavit you completed, I will appoint the public defender, and you can make that decision on another day. Thank okay? you, Your Honor. I appreciate You're welcome, that. sir. Is there an offer for Mr. Pugh? There is not, Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Pugh, your bond is $250. Thank you, sir. No return. So no return as well? Yeah. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Pugh, I don't know if I told you, but I, you can't return to the Home Depot at 7022 Colonial, West Colonial Drive. Okay? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Are you Mr. Sylvester? Yes. How are you? Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good. Thank you. This is case number 19MM3232. You were arrested for providing false ID to law enforcement and trespass on property after warning. I find probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender. Is there an offer for Mr. Sylvester? There is not, Your Honor, because I can't tell what type of property this is mm. based on the affidavit. It just says the address. It doesn't tell me if it's a business. If it doesn't tell me what it is at this point, Your Honor. Right. Okay. Mr. Sylvester, your bond on count one is five hundred dollars, and your bond on count two is one hundred dollars. Thank you, no sir. Return. Sir, you can't return to. Um. Twenty sixty Americana Boulevard. Okay. Where the, you can't return to where you were arrested. Okay. okay? Thank, you. Thank you, sir. Good morning. Are you Mr. Martinez? Yes, ma'am. Sir, you are here for an out of county warrant from Seminole County for the offense of grand theft and resisting an officer without violence. Your bond is currently set at none, sir. If you're unable to post that bond, um, Seminole County will come and pick you up and you'll see a judge when you get there. Okay. All right, thank, thank you. you. Good morning, are you Mr. Smith? Yes, ma'am. Sir, you're here for an out-of-county warrant from Seminole County for a violation of probation on petty theft. Your bond is currently set at none, and Seminole County will come and pick you up, and you'll see a judge when you get there. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Mr. Gamble, or <coughs> Coleman? Sure. Sir, good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Your name? Tracy Michael. Yes, thank you. Okay, Mr. Michael, this is your motion for non-monetary release conditions. Go ahead, Mr. Augusto. Uh, yes, Your Honor, we are here on behalf of uh, Mr. Michael for the motion for non-monetary release conditions. Uh, spoke to the state earlier, and they had no objection as to the motion. Okay. We just want to make sure there was still a no, no return and yes. no contact, Your Honor. Okay, let me just take a look.
good sir. Um, Michael, I will grant your motion, but you yes, still are not allowed to return to the Red Sea store, sir. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Make sure you stay in contact with your attorney and their office. Yes, ma'am. So they have your contact information so you don't miss your court date. And make sure that it's updated with the clerk of the court so you get notice as well. Yes, ma'am. All right. Yes, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Gamble. Good morning. You're here in case number 19 CF 5339. You were charged of burglary with burglary of a conveyancer. I do find probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender's office to represent you, sir. I'll set your bond at $2,500. Thank you, sir. We just ask for no return to the 332 South Central Avenue and no contact with the victims. Yes, sir. Do you understand you can't return to 332 South Central Avenue and you can't have any contact? Um, I have a Jeanette Stefko and a Jeffrey Dow. Okay. Jeanette Stefko and Jeffrey Dow, yes. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir. You know, I'm asking to recall Mr. Oakleaf. This is the case where I was waiting for her. May I approach with a supplemental report? Sure. I did get an email back to the sheriff's office. Okay. Records. And Mr. Augusto has Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Oakleaf. <clears throat> oh. Second page Oakleaf. where it says that he did field test. Mm -hmm. oh, Mr. Oakleaf. Mr. Augusto, did you have an opportunity to review it? Yes, Your Honor, I okay. did. Okay, so there is probable cause for Mr. Oakley's case, so the bonds will remain the same at 500 and 100. So still the 500 and 100? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Oh, I don't know if they served him or not. They did? Do we bring him in? The warrant would be... She just left the bonds. This just found PC. So, thank you, Dexter. So, and procedurally, though, so when the warrants are served, they when the police serve that warrant, then they take a copy to your office. Is that what happened? Huh? And you guys upload that? Or you have it? Because the warrant went there. So then when we
makes it a lot of chaos. Yeah. Trying to read and everything. And do everything. You're like reading as you're going along, trying to flip quickly. So. We didn't start till 9 15. Uh, I need to, to understand what do you need we start in order to have an order? Or how do we get an order? I, I, that's what I don't understand. But this would be. Okay. But you can. Can you create an order like that for this other case? Mm -hmm. I think he just was served. Mr. Caban was just served, is that right? Yes. Okay. Okay, so do we want to, I'm gonna do the 33 day motions, and then if we're finished, do we wanna just, is it better to put him after lunch, or do we wanna just wait? After lunch. After lunch, okay. Then that's good for Ann too, cause she needs to talk to her office about the order, um, and then we'll just see him after lunch. Um, Ms. Kennedy Swanson, are you ready for the 33 day motions? Yeah. We're gonna see Mr. Caban after lunch. Okay. This is 19 CF 3641, Wisberty Cruz. That should be denied. The state filed an information and request to transfer from felony to misdemeanor this morning. That will be denied. 19 CF 3667, Mark Juber. That should be denied. The state filed an information on 416. That will be denied. 19 CF 3747, Andrew Morales. That should be granted. The state filed a notice of non-filing before the 33rd day on 416. That will be granted. 19 CF 3706, Miguel Serrano. That should be granted. The state filed a notice of non-filing before the 33rd day on 416. That will be granted. 19 CF 3380, John Roberts. That should be denied. The state filed an information on 416. That will be denied. 19 MM 185, Bloomquist Jonathan. That should be denied. The state filed an information on 416. That will be denied. 19 CF 3794, Kelly Gooden. That should be granted. The state filed a notice of non-filing before the 33rd day on 416. That'll be granted. Jonathan Black. That should be denied. The state filed an information on 416. That will be denied. 19 CF 3690, Abel Gomez. That should be granted. The state filed a notice of non-filing before the 33rd day um, on 416. And again, Abel Gomez, 19 CF 3700. That should be granted. The state filed a notice of non-filing before the 33rd day on 416. Okay. And anything else? That's all, Your Honor. All right. We'll be in recess until 1 o'clock.
Good afternoon. I'm Judge Amy Carter. This is Courtroom One, Session Two. Could I have the attorneys place their appearances on the record, please? Kathy Kennedy Swanson on behalf of the Office of the State Attorney. Alexis Augusto on behalf of the Office of the Public Defender. Thank you. Judge, on the Mangate case, the trafficking from earlier this morning? Yes. Um, I guess the original warrant said to surrender the passport. I believe the court didn't order it this morning. Well, the court just That was on the original affidavit to issue warrant. Okay. Um, will the court order the surrender of the passport as well as the original conditions that the court set this morning? Yes. Um, which case was it? Miss Jackie. Oh. Yes. Okay, so I will order that she says surrender the passport if she has one. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And I think the order should reflect that that way if they ask her and she says she doesn't have it, then it won't Understand. Um, prevent her from being released. Okay. I don't They're trying to figure out, because this is the one with the co-defendants, these are the co-defendant oh, Mr. Cases, Hall. To see if Mr. Hall had it on the original warrant too. That's what they're looking at now. You know, I don't remember seeing that in his this morning. I do remember seeing hers when I read it this morning. Okay. But I- It's just on hers? Yeah, okay. I did Thank remember you. seeing it on him. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. And that was 19 CF 4135. Sir, good afternoon. Tell me your name. Uh, David Bukolt. Hmm. Mr. Bukolt. So, how about um, Edward Almstead? Oh, I'm sorry, Your Honor. That's okay. Bonded, Your Honor. All right. And Kate Lassie, also bonded. Okay. Mr. Bukolt, you were arrested, sir, in case number 19, CF 5418. You were um, arrested for possession of cocaine and possession of drug paraphernalia. I do find probable cause. I'm going to appoint the public defender's office to represent you, sir, and I'm going to release you ROR. You're gonna what? Release you on your own recognizance, sir. Oh. Okay, make sure that the clerk of the court and the public defender's office has your contact information so that you don't miss your court date and you get notice of any court dates you have, okay? Oh yeah. yeah. Your Honor, state for the record, state would prefer a PTR release on okay. Mr. Buckholtz. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon, sir. Your name? Terrence Clayton. Mr. Clayton, you were arrested in case number 18 CF 9434 for robbery with a weapon pursuant to a probable cause order. And you have been charged by information with attempted robbery with a weapon. I will appoint the public defender's office to represent you, sir. And your bond is $5,000. You're not also not to possess any weapons or any firearms while out on bond and you're not to return to the Publix um, at North Orlando, 242 North Orlando Avenue. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir, your name? I'm Brandon Daniels. Mr. Daniels, this is case number 19 CF 5410. You were arrested for escape, possession of cannabis, less than 20 grams, and possession of drug paraphernalia. I find probable cause for those offenses, sir. You were also arrested in 19 CT 2964 for driving while license suspended. I also find probable cause for that offense. Um, Excuse me, Judge. Um, 
I have made uh, I have made efforts to fix my license. I actually pay off for different tickets. Good. The only thing that's stopping me is it's a ticket in Polk County, right? Okay. I have nothing to do. I've never been to Polk County. It was some uh, um, past employer who was driving a U-Haul that was in my name, and he had uh, had got a red light ticket I didn't know about, and okay. that's why my license is suspended. I understand, sir. Unfortunately, I can't help you with that. You're going to have to go to Polk County and see what you can do to take care of that. Yeah. Um, and that in the CT case, sir, I'm going to set your bond at $100. Um, and then on case number 19 CF 5410, I'm going to set your bond, sir, at $2,500 on count one, $100 on count two, $100 on count three, and in 19MM2875, sir, I'm going to revoke your bond at this time. That will be set at none. And then in 19CT2672, I'll take no action on that case. Hey, Dexter, Mr. Clayton has a second case that I didn't see, so we'll have to bring him back for that. Okay. And it can be when he fits in, that's fine. I'll set it over here. Oh, and, okay. I, I revoked. Hey, you said it none on the. That's fine. Okay. It could be at the end too, whatever's easier. Good afternoon, ma'am. Your name? Renata Hoppy Green. Ma'am, you are here in case number 19 CF 5416. You were arrested for possession of a controlled substance, introducing contraband into a detention facility, possession of drug paraphernalia and giving false reports to law enforcement. I'm going to set your bond at $2,500 on count one, count two will be 150, count three 100 and count four 150. I will also appoint the public defender's office to represent you ma'am. Thank you. Is there another uh, hold for um, My information that you have, I think, too, on the face sheet says that she has an outstanding warrant in Aaron, Tennessee, mm -hmm. and it's no extradition. Oh, okay. They'll pick up anywhere in Tennessee. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then... So I also didn't notice on count one, it's two counts yeah. for Ms. Haight. So it will be, I guess, 1,500 for one count and then 1,000 for another for a total of 2,500. Okay. And then on count three, the possession of drug paraphernalia, it'll be.
Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. Your name? Kaylin Jones. Ms. Jones, this is case number 19 CF 5423. You were arrested for possession of cocaine. I find probable cause. I'm going to appoint the public defender and I'm going to place you on pretrial release. Thank you, ma'am. So yeah, for Miss No, Miss for Miss Key, Mr. Augusto. Oh, I'm sorry, Your Honor. What, um, sorry. For Latoya Key, she's here on FTA. She failed to appear on the 12th okay. for status hearings on her conditional releases. Judge Kest wrote on the court minutes that she's to appear before him the following business day of her arrest. Okay. So do you want to waive her appearance yeah, at we'll this wait. time? Okay. And then do you put that on the order? So how does she then get taken before him the next business day? So on, for Ms. Ms. Key, um, Judge Kest wrote on the order that she's to be taken before him the following business day after her arrest. How does that get implemented? Okay. Okay, and then it's coordinated with his JA to get put on his docket. Okay, all right. So Mr. Augusto, are you... Okay. Comfortable with all of that and yes, wait for appearance? Okay. Yes, thank you. Mr. Clayton, I missed a case that you had also in addition to the first one we talked about this is 19 cf 5421 you were arrested for possession of a hallucinogen with in with intent to sell or deliver I find probable cause, sir. I'm going to appoint the public defender on that case as well. And I'm gonna set your bond at $1,000. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, your name? Alan Mark. Mr. Mark, this is case number 19 CF 5408. You were arrested for tampering with physical evidence in possession of drug paraphernalia. I find probable cause. I'm going to appoint the public defender and I'm going to place you on pretrial release. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Your name? Cody Michael. Mr. Michael, this is case number 19 CF 5412. You were arrested for aggravated assault with a firearm. I do find probable cause. And yeah, you're at the victim present. Oh, okay. Just give me one second. Mr. Michael, is it correct that you make $1,500 every two weeks? Yes. Okay. And you don't have any dependents? No. Okay. Um, you don't qualify for the public defender, but I am going to temporarily appoint them for purposes of the initial appearance, but you otherwise, sir, will need to um, hire an attorney to assist you with this case after today. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. Good afternoon. Hey. Hi. Are you? Go ahead. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give should be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Please state your name for the record. I'm Sharon Brewer, and these are my kids. Okay. Good afternoon, Ms. Brewer. Go ahead, Ms. Yes. Um, 
Miss Brewer, are you the victim in 19 CF 5412 where the defendant is Cody Michael? Yes. Are you afraid of Mr. Michael? Yes, me and my kids both. I didn't go to work today. They're scared to go to school, and she catches the bus. Okay, and is that because he was outside of the residence and pointed a black firearm? He tried to come in the house, but the door was shut, you know, locked. He continued twisting the knob and knocking with his with the gun to the door. I kept telling him, you're at the wrong house, you're at the wrong house, because he lives next door. He, I, mean, I kept telling him, you're at the wrong house, the wrong house. I called my friend to come over where I live at to see if she's seen him outside still. He was standing, like this is the window, he's standing at the kid's window with the rifle pointed to the window, back and forth, you know, to the front door, to the window. You don't live there, you live next door. Okay. I understand. And is it, um, you said, is it like an apartment or a house? They're, they're apartments. And he lives directly next door or a yeah, few houses, like, few doors down? Like I'm in eight, he's in eight, but I'm in 407, I think his is like 305 or 306. Okay. And is it they're your- They're too close together for, I, mean, I went to the office today, I told him everything, I'm, my lease is up May 4th, so I'm moving. My kids are further life. I don't have family here. He needs to stay in for another week or so, so I move. I don't want to be near him. I understand. Thank you for your testimony. Okay. Ms. Brewer, um, have you ever had any contact with Mr. Michael before yesterday? Never. I mean, I go to work every morning. He, he, he has two dogs. He's usually outside. Sure. You know, hey, bye, but never, hey, you know, never no contact. I mean, he's a in the community. I mean, I speak to everybody, but sure. never no contact like that. Okay. He kept, when he came to the door, he kept saying, get out of my effing house, get out of my effing house. You don't live here, you live next door. I understand, ma'am. He had a, a thing of, um, I don't know what the, what, the, what the alcohol was called, but that was in that hand, the rifle's in his hand. Okay. And he when the police arrived, they took forever, but they still, he still had the liquor in the um, you know, in the bag that he, because we live by the, we live by the ABC, so he still had everything in the bag. Still, he even left it right there by my house. I even told me I could fingerprint that he got that. Like it's crazy. I don't know. And I, I just, you know, I, I, I'm, I mean, I got kids. My kids right. are terrified. I don't. I just don't trust everybody. You try to, but it, it's seriously people. You know, it's on people's mind. I understand, ma'am. Thank you for coming today. Anything else? Just argument, Your Honor. Okay. I don't know if the defense has any questions. Did you want to no, ask her any questions? I didn't have okay. any questions, Your Honor. Your Honor, um, as to, we would ask for a $50,000 bond as to the ag firearm, no contact with the victims, no return to even his residence, which seems to be one or two doors down without a one-time return with law enforcement to collect any belongings he may need. And then I believe the testimony was that she's going to move by May 4th, um, so that'd be about a two-week where he couldn't return to the residence, except for that one time. Um, no alcohol, um, no drugs, and obviously no firearms. And to surrender them within um, six hours of his release to whatever it's, whether it's the sheriff's or OPD in his um, area. Mr. Augusto? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, we believe, uh, although there is probable cause, we would not dispute that. However, we would ask that the court consider the circumstances of this case um, and also consider the lack of criminal history Mr. Michael has. He has no criminal history whatsoever, uh, never had any failure to appear as he's a Navy veteran. Um, but we also ask that the court consider the fact that in the affidavit and as the victim just testified, um, he believed that it was his own home and he was afraid that an intruder was in his own home. So there must have been some kind of confusion and nothing like this has happened before. So we ask that the court consider all of this and set bond um, at a reasonable amount. And we believe 50,000 is just in excess of that and allow Mr. Michael to return home. And Your Honor, based on, I mean, his testimony and obviously him not calling for the qualifying to me for the public defender in future hearings based on his income level. And I understand that it may have been a mistake of home, but obviously that mistake of home should not be put burden put on the victims as they were in their home minding their own business. Um, uh, it may have been alcohol or it may not have been, but I don't believe that his lack of criminal history or his um, ability to mistake the house, he had a, alcohol and he had a firearm at the time when he terrorized these victims. Um, Mr. Michael, do you have an alternative place to stay? You know, I just moved here five weeks ago and I don't have family or anything. You don't have any friends or family in the area? Not yet, no. Mr. 
Michael, I'm going to order that you cannot have any contact with Miss Brewer or her children. Okay. Um, I'm gonna order that you're not to possess any weapons or any firearms while you're out on bond. If you do have a firearm or any weapons, those need to be surrendered to the sheriff's office within six hours of your release. You need to call them before you go to make arrangements to turn them in, okay? Um, you're not to possess or consume any alcohol while you're out on bond. I'm going to set your bonds for at $7,500. Thank you. <whistles> Sir, good afternoon. Your name? Mr. Pitts, this is case number 19 CF 5417. You are arrested for possession of ecstasy and possession of drug paraphernalia. I do find probable cause. I will appoint the public defender's office to represent you, sir. Your bond on count one is $1,000 and your bond on count two is $100. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, ma'am. Your name? Kyla Reeves. Ms. Reeves. You are here in case number 19 CF 5420. You were arrested for driving while license suspended or revoked as a habitual offender. I do find probable cause and I will appoint the public defender's office to represent you. You also have a violation of probation out of Osceola County with the basis being this new law violation, ma'am. At this time, I'm going to set your bond at none. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you on that case as well. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Sir, your name? Christopher Spivey. Mr. Spivey, this is case number 19 CF 5409. You were arrested for possession of ecstasy. I find probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender's office. And sir, your bond is $500. Your Honor, Mr. Spivey would like to ask if the court would consider ROR in this matter. No, he has an active warrant in Georgia for failing to appear for court. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. <whistles> Sir, good afternoon. Your name? Um, Martin Clemente. Mr. Clemente, you are here in case number 19MM1742. You failed to appear for arraignment on March 26th of this year for the offense of possession of cannabis less than 20 grams. Your bond is $500. Is there an offer for Mr. Clemente? Adjudication of guilt credit for time served. Okay. How many days does Mr. Clemente have? Oh, it was? So one day? Uh, he got arrested today. So one day. Okay. Thank you. We'll, we'll accept that offer. Okay. Honor. Oh, 
need to. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Clemente, did you read the plea form before you signed it? Yes, ma'am. Do you have any questions about any of the rights on the form that you're giving up? Uh, um, no, ma'am. Okay. Um, are you on probation? No, ma'am. Do you understand if you're not a United States citizen that this plea will subject you to deportation? I see. Have you taken any drugs, alcohol, or medication that would affect your ability to understand what's happening in court today? No, ma'am. Sir, I'm going to accept your plea. I'm going to adjudicate you guilty. Uh, sentence you to one day in the Orange County Jail with credit for one day time served. Um, I also want to let you know that your driver's license is going to be suspended for one year as a result of the plea. Okay? Um, you have to pay court costs. Those need to be paid by April 17th of 2020, and you have 30 days to appeal the judgment and sentence of the court in writing. All right? Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, ma'am. Your name? Kathleen Drotzer. Ma'am, you're here in case number 18MM1205. You failed to appear for a plea hearing. Your bond is set at $500. Is there an offer for Ms. Drotzer? Adjudic adjudication, credit for time served, no return to the Wawa, restitution in the amount of $4.09. Okay. Yep. Ms. Drotzer, did you want to accept that offer? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Were you appointed, Your Honor? It was set for a plea hearing, so it yes, seems like yes. Yes. Okay. Thank. You. Sorry, Do we know how much time she had? Yeah. Thank you. She got arrested two days ago, so she's four days. Two from this arrest. Did you already hand me her plea form? This is the wrong person. This is Martin Clemente's plea form. This is this is Drotzer. I'm just gonna throw this one away. Didn't Clemente take the plea last? Were there two of his forms? Did we have two? Did I just maybe never? She came and gave me the plea form. Officer Maxwell did. He had two forms. He Mr. Clemente, because we have his plea form here. Okay. So he had two. We'll um, just throw the other one away, please. Okay. All right, Ms. Strozer, you did you read the plea form before you signed it? Yes, ma'am. Do you have any questions about any of the rights you're giving up? No. Are you on probation? No. Do you understand if you're not a United States citizen that this plea will subject you to deportation? Yes, have you taken any drugs, alcohol, or medication that would affect your ability to understand what's happening in court this afternoon? No, ma'am. Okay. I'll accept your plea. I'll adjudicate you guilty. Sentence you to six days in the Orange County Jail with credit for six days time served. You are not to return to the Wawa. You need to pay restitution in the amount of $4.09. You also need to pay court costs. Those need to be paid by April 17th of 2020, and you have 30 days to appeal the judgment and sentence of the court in writing. Well, thank you. Right. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Hold on. There's that.
Good afternoon, sir. Are you Mr. Greeny? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Sir, you are here in case number 19MM3235. You were arrested for possession of drug paraphernalia. I do find probable cause and will appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Is there an offer for Mr. Greeny? Mr. Greeny, um, adjudication of guilt credit for time served okay. or no objection. No, oh, I'm sorry. That's it. Okay. He is the Adam Vaughn cases. We will accept that offer, Your Honor. All right. Just need the plea form, please. <laughs> Mr. Greeny, did you uh, read the plea form before you signed it, sir? Yes, ma'am. Do you have any questions about any of the rights you're giving up? No, ma'am. Are you on probation? No, ma'am. Do you understand if you're not a United States citizen that this plea will subject you to deportation? Yes, ma'am. Have you taken any drugs, alcohol, or medication that would affect your ability to understand what's happening in court this morning? No, ma'am. Or this afternoon? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, sir, I'm going to accept your plea, adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to two days in the orange, one day in the orange, one day in the Orange County Jail with credit for one day time served. You also will need to pay court costs. Those need to be paid by, Fe or, I'm sorry, by April 17th of 2020. You have 30 days to appeal the judgment and sentence of the court in writing, and then 19 MM 2329 and 19 MM 2427. I'll take no action at this time, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Did Miss Mills bond out? She's all one. Okay. Good afternoon, Are you Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith, you are here in case number 19MM3237, possession of drug paraphernalia. I find probable cause and will appoint the public defender. Is there an offer for Mr. Smith? Yes, Your Honor. Adjudication, five days. We will accept that offer, Your Honor, and plea no contest. Okay. Mr. Smith, did you read the plea form before you signed it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Do you have any questions about any of the rights that no. you're giving up? No, ma'am. Are you on probation? No, ma'am. Um, do you understand, sir, if you're not a United States citizen, that this plea will subject you to deportation? Yes. Have you taken any drugs, alcohol, or medication that would affect your ability to understand what's happening in court today? No, ma'am. I'll accept your plea adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to five days in the Orange County Jail with credit for one day time served. You need to pay court costs. Those need to be paid by April 17th of 2020. You have 30 days to appeal the judgment and sentence of the court in writing. In case number 19 CF 4862, I will take no action at this time. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir. Your name? Avery Staples. Mr. Staples, this is case number 19MM3236. You were arrested for possession of drug paraphernalia as well as 19MO700. 
open container. I find probable cause for both of the offenses, sir. Did you want an attorney to represent you? No, ma'am. Okay. Is there an offer for Mr. Staples? Adjudication three days concurrent. Okay. And you have two days in, Mr. Staples. You'll be released today. Okay. You want to accept the offer? Yes, ma'am. Okay. It says he's arrested 416. Is that not right? So when you have two days? He's arrested on the 16th. Yeah. He was. I showed that he was arrested at on the 16th, so he should have credit for two. For two? Yes. Okay. I think state position be the transportation time to get to the BRC should be included in your okay your credit. Still in custody, still right? Still in custody. Okay. Freedom of movement is restricted. M Mr. Staples, did you read the plea form before you signed it, sir? Yes. Do you have any questions about any of the rights that you're giving up? No. Um, sir, are you on probation? No. Do you understand if you're not a United States citizen that this plea will subject you to deportation? Yes. Sir, have you taken any drugs, alcohol, or medication that would affect your ability to understand what's happening in court today? Sir, I'm going to adjudicate you guilty on both counts, sentence you to three days in the Orange County Jail with credit for two days time served. And those sentences are to run concurrent to one another. You're also going to need to pay court costs. They need to be paid by April 17th of 2020. So one year from today. And then, sir, you have 30 days to appeal the judgment and sentence of the court in writing. Okay. Right. Thank you. Good afternoon, are you Mr. Zamora? Yes, ma'am. Sir, this is case number 19MM3238. You were arrested for possession of cannabis, less than 20 grams. I do find probable cause. I will appoint the public defender and I'm going to place you on pretrial release, sir. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Zamora. Mr. State Zamora. had no objection to ROR. Okay. I'm gonna order pretrial release. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Good afternoon, sir. Your name? Fisher, Jeffrey. Mr. Fisher, you're here for an out of county warrant from yes, Collier County. This is a, for a violation of probation, sir. Your bond is currently set at none. Collier County will come and pick you up, and you'll see a judge when you get there. All right? Thank you. Sir, good afternoon. Your name? Matthew Naxon. Mr. Naxon, you're here for an out-of-county warrant from Polk County. This is for a possession of drug paraphernalia related to a violation of probation. Your bond is currently set at none. Polk County will come and pick you up and you'll see a judge when you get there. Okay. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, ma'am. Are you Ms. Stewart? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Ms. Stewart, you are here for an out-of-county warrant from Osceola County for the offenses of grand theft, forgery, and uttering a forged document. Your bond on count one is $2,500. Your bond on count two is $1,000. Your bond on count three is $500. And you will see a judge when you get to Seminole County. Seminole County? I'm sorry, Osceola County. Where is that, ma'am? Where? Yes. Just south of here. Okay. Okay? All right. Thank you.
Good afternoon, sir. Your name? Larry Allen. Mr. Allen, you are here in case number 19MO701. You were arrested for open container. There is probable cause, and I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. Is there an offer for Mr. Allen? Adjudication, three days. Sorry, two days. Excuse okay. Me. And okay. he has one day in, Mr. Augusto. We will accept that offer, Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Allen, did you read the plea form before you signed it? Yes, ma'am. Do you have any questions about any of the rights that you're giving up on the form? No, ma'am. Are you on probation? No, ma'am. Do you understand if you're not a United States citizen that this plea will subject you to deportation? Yes, ma'am. Have you taken any drugs, alcohol, or medication that would affect your ability to understand what's happening in court today? No, ma'am. I'll accept your plea, adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to two days in the Orange County Jail with credit for one day, You'll have to pay court costs. Those are, are need to be paid by April 17th of 2020, and you have 30 days to appeal the judgment and sentence of the court in writing, sir. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. For Mr. Clark, is that what you said? I'm sorry, Mr. Clark. No. Okay. Who was the next person? Ms. Olson? Ms. Olson is also no. Okay. Oh, thank you. Yes. Okay, so Mr. Augusta, you want to reset Mr. Clark and Ms. Olson again? Um, you want to set them for a status in a week? What do you want to do? We'll wave, Your Honor, yeah. You'll wave? Yes. Okay. So on Ms. Olson, let's set her case for a status in one week, and Mr. Clark as well. Do you point the PD on both those cases? Actually, yes, I'm appointing the public defender, but only set the status on Mr. Clark, the 19M0686, not on Ms. Olson. Point the PDM both, please. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Good afternoon, Mr. Caban. Uh, this is a recall from this morning, 19 CF 4937, sir. That is actually the correct case and the warrant on you has now been served. Your bond in that matter is going to be $2,500. And then on the 19 CF 5422, I'm gonna release you ROR okay. um, because that's not technically a case. Sir, um, you do have reporting requirements when you're released from the jail, okay? Okay. All right. I'm sorry, that was $2,500 on the 4937 case? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. And then I believe, is that everything? All right, and then we'll be in recess.